Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this evening's Board of Education meeting being held in the Town Hall Chambers. The date is Tuesday, November 26, 2019. I appreciate if everyone could turn off all their cell phones or other electronic devices as the meeting is being recorded. Ellen, would you please do the roll call? Thank you, Chairperson Carey. Good evening, everyone. Mr. Cassio? Present. Mrs. Evans? Here. Mrs. Granado? Here. Mr. Lesser? Here. Mr. Michaels? Here. Mrs. Paradise? Present. Mr. Riley? Here. Vice Chairperson Mr. Healy? Here. Chairperson Carey? Present. And Weathersfield High School student representative Mr. Isaac Santos? Not here. Ab absent this evening. Thank you. All present. Thank you. All right, I would like to call the Highcrest Girl Scout Troop and the Boy Scouts to come lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Mr. Emmett, student and staff recognition presentation. Yes, thank you, Mr. Carey. Good evening, everyone. We have a presentation this evening from Girl Scout Troop 10276 from High Crest School. So if you could come up to the podium. Thank you for inviting our Girl Scout troop to share our Bronze Award idea with you. We hope you will agree with our idea. We are Troop 10276. We are fifth graders in Weathersfield at Highcrest Elementary School. We are ages 10 and 11. Our Girl Scout troop is working on our Girl Scout Bronze Award. The Bronze Award is an award for junior Girl Scouts, teaming up to make a difference in our in our community. Our troop has held a food drive at Highcrest Elementary in November since we were daisies in kindergarten. Last year, we partnered with the Weathersfield School District for the district-wide food drive and stuff above. Our ask of the Weathersfield, our ask of the Weathersfield Board of Education. We would like to move the Weathersfield School District food drive from the fall to May to allow for a more consistent food supply to the people in Weathersfield. Why move the food drive? The Weathersfield Food Bank gets a lot of extra food at the holidays. One, many local companies and organizations hold food drives around the holidays. Two, many other charities hold food drives during November and December, like churches. More reasons why. There is a higher demand for food in the summer. More parents use the food bank in the summer because kids are out of school. The the demand for the summer meal program increases every year and doubled last year. There are fewer donations in the spring and summer months. The Weathersfield Food Bank and Food Share helped us look at the data in our town. What the Weathersfield statistics tell us. The food insecurity rate in Weathersfield is 9%. The U.S. Department of Agriculture defines food insecurity as a lack of constant access to enough food for an active, healthy life. Alice in Poverty Households is 34%. Alice stands for Asset Limited Income Constraint Employed. This means that families are working but don't have enough money for what they need. Last year, 74,483 meals were distributed in Weathersfield. 
recommendation. We recommend moving the Wethersfield School District food drive from November to May to even out food distribution, reduce food insecurity, and provide more food when our community needs it most. Thank you for, for, li thank you for listening to our idea. We are happy to answer any questions you may have. Any board members with questions? Comments for them? No, nice job. Wonderful job, everyone. Mr. Kathy? Yes. I just have a question. First of all, thank you for what you do. The other thing is, you've been all together since Daisies? Most of you have been all? That Pretty is great. Much. Pretty much, yeah. So it's a consistent number? Of yes, yeah. Excellent. A couple in and a couple out, but pretty much consistent. And how many adults do you have helping? Uh, there are two co-leaders, but the <laughs> whole back row are very um, instrumental moms and dads that help us out, and we're grateful thank for you. them. Thank you. Good. Well, thank you so much. Yep. Ms. Evans? You know, I... Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh. Um, just one thing. Um, this would go to HAT, which is our Hunger Action Team, and I do go to the Hunger Action Team meeting, so I will present your consideration, your recommendation to them, Okay. Thank you very much. We did work with someone at the food bank, Christina, um, forgetting her, I'm forgetting her last name, but one of the social workers with the food bank helped us um, with the idea and with all the projects that we did. That's wonderful. Yeah. I'm glad you're involved. Ms. Evans. Oh, girls, this was a great presentation. I was very impressed with your ability to come up and talk to all of us so well, because I wouldn't have been able to do it that well. And the use of the data and the whole idea, I would 100, obviously I don't make the decision, but I 100% stand behind it. I think it's a great idea. Thank you so much for coming and getting this out there. Mr. Emmett. Ladies, I greatly appreciated the presentation this evening and you bring up some very good points. And I was also quite impressed with the data that you presented. So um, I will be looking forward to meeting with you next week um, over at High Crest to see how we can make this happen. I think it's a great idea. So let's work on it. Very well done. Thank you very much. I just have Do I have a motion to approve the minutes from the November 12, 2019 Board of Education meeting? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Anyone abstaining? Motion passes. All right, public comment. Anyone wishing to make public comment may come to the podium. State your name and your address, and you have five minutes. Don't bring up. Yep. Well. I was here once before, well over a year ago, and uh, I was talking about. Um, Ma'am, do we have your name and address? This? Yeah, name and address. Name and address. Oh, I'm sorry, Margaret Brown, 191 Garden Street, Weathersfield. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm back just because I'm uh, very concerned and think things should be different. I am here tonight to discuss the need for metal detectors in our schools. This looks very long, but it's double spaced in big writing. Uh, we need to protect the children and staff in this town. I am, as are many people, afraid of the worst. Children today have grown up with metal detectors at airports, all government federal buildings, major league sporting events, concerts, plays, and many other uh, locations. 
Why are our children and grandchildren not first on the list for medical, metal detectors in our schools? They should have been first on the list ahead of all the other locations that I just mentioned. Schools are where the large majority of shootings, that is mass shootings, take place. The worst, as we all know, was 30 minutes from here at Sandy Hook. Two, week, two weeks ago, one of my grandsons in Santa Clarita, California, was walking to school in the morning. A group of children were rushing toward him, telling him to go home because there was a shooting and the school was on lockdown. He rushed home. The shooter was supposedly still at large. He was home alone because his parents worked. Um, <clears throat> The dead children were in the school that was five minutes from his school. Although California is 3,000 miles away from me, that event, Newtown, and others are way too close to home for me. Some people say shootings would not happen in a nice town like Wethersfield, Newtown, or Santa Clarita, or countless other shootings that have all happened in very nice towns. The other arguments are detectors would frighten the children. They have all gone through drills of what to do if there is a shooter in their school. I would think that would be more frightening than detectors. My generations and my children's generation were never afraid of dry, dying while in school. I don't think there is a child in the USA schools who doesn't think about this at some point. I would hope detectors might give them a little more or a lot more sense of safety. Another argument against detectors is the cost and the time it would take the kids to get into the schools. I don't own a home, but I would pay a higher car tax or special tax to make sure our children are safe and our staff are safe. Or I. <clears throat> Or I would rather wait on spending for some other projects in order to ensure they stay alive. It is up to us to keep our children and grandchildren alive. The children have to go to school. It's a law. And they don't have the power or money to help ensure they leave school alive. Another argument is getting the children into school would take longer. They perhaps could have staggered arrival times or some other plan to accommodate detectors. They managed to get 36,000 people through metal detectors at Fenway Park and many, many other locations. I was at the Bushnell to see Hello Dolly. We all went through metal detectors. <clears throat> and I always have to get wanded because of fake hips. I know Connecticut has some of the toughest gun laws in the country. However, you can still buy them on the internet or travel to another state to obtain guns, including assault weapons, or most especially assault weapons. I am very much in favor of strong federal gun laws, though I finally realized it's not going to happen in my lifetime, if ever. I attended the march in Washington that the students from Parkland High School organized. There were people of all ages, as far as the eye could see, in all directions, and still no change in gun, gun laws unless you call, you know, you count whatever it was called, bump stocks, that anybody can make at home. So basically there was no change in gun laws. I attended a town hall meeting in Greenwich, Connecticut in the middle of a blizzard that Senators Blumenthal and Chris Murphy attended. There was a fair amount of people there who spoke and still no federal gun laws. After those two events, I decided to work on security issues instead of gun laws since, as I said previously, don't, that won't happen in my lifetime, if ever. I implore you to consider this issue and is it possible to hear from some of you now on your opinions? Anybody? And I didn't realize the Boy Scouts were here until I looked up a little bit ago. I am sorry. There's no They're comments. young. There's no comments for in public comment? But we do oh, there aren't? No, not from us. No, but we do appreciate you coming up. The last Board of Ed meeting, somebody made a comment. 
that I came to over a year ago. All right. But there shouldn't be any comments at Board of Ed meetings during public comment? There won't be? No. So this is just talking to nobody? No, but you may, you may be addressed during board comment at the end, or you can come back up and do public comment again. I would come up and do it again? There's more public comment if you have any more to say. If other people do? Yeah. Oh, if I do? If you do, if you want to come back up. On this subject? All right, anything else? Yes. But nobody either here or there comments? No, ma'am. Is that true of the town council too? Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Mary Kay Jensen, 23 Quail Hill. Um, so, so I'll respond to you. Um, one great way to work on security is to fully pass the um, school of Board of Ed budget um, so that we can move forward with new schools. Um, oh, okay. Uh, the schools are falling apart. I know before the party changed over, um, we were going somewhere uh, in conversation about the future and I'm not sure where that stands. Um, so I would love to not go backwards but instead go forward um, with plans for our schools. It's really important for me that, this, um, that the classrooms are small, that they're not overcrowded, um, that my kid isn't one of 20 plus 25 students, I want small classrooms. Um, and if we do get new buildings, security would just be rolled into that. So um, I think that that would be um, high on their agenda, but um, the budget needs to be fully funded. So um, I'll probably come twice a month and tell you that. So <laughs> you'll see me again. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment? All right, seeing none, communications, Mr. Emmett. Yes, thank you, Mr. Kerry. Good evening again, everyone. I have uh, several items uh, this evening to report on. Uh, over the course of the um, holiday break in December, the IT team will be performing an upgrade uh, to Windows 10 on all classroom desktop units. This upgrade is included within our Microsoft licensing package, so there's no additional cost. The upgrade will add additional features not found on the current Windows 7 operating system and more importantly will add some additional security features to the machines. Also included in this upgrade is a move from Office 10, where we currently are, to Office 19. This upgrade is also going to be performed on the town side as well and the expectation for completion of this project is late January of 2020. I uh, recently had the opportunity to visit uh, Hanmer School where we had author and illustrator Catherine Gorski O'Connor uh, come to present the school with a copy of her children's book, I Love Socks. <laughs> Catherine is a Weathersfield native uh, who attended Hanmer School during her elementary years, a graduate of the class of 1980. Catherine read to the kindergarten and first grade students and answered questions and demonstrated how she illustrates her books. Catherine also visited Mrs. Weaver's art class and worked with fourth and fifth grade students on illustrating. Would also like to uh, remind the community as I'm starting to look at the weather, maybe a little wintry weather coming up on Sunday into Monday. I'm hoping that isn't the case, but I'd like to give the opportunity uh, to remind community members that we have changed our school delay time schedule from a 90 minute delay to a standard two hour delay. Students, I know you're thrilled about that. Parents, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> This uh, allows our Weathersfield Town staff some additional time to get sidewalks and parking lots cleared, and this is more consistent with our surrounding towns as well as area magnet schools. So for Weathersfield High School on a two-hour delay, 9.40 to 2.15, Silas Dean, 10 o'clock to 2.35, Weathersfield Transition Academy, 10.30 to 2 o'clock, Charles Wright and Emerson Williams, 10.30 to 3 o'clock, and Highcrest, Hanmer, and Webb, 10.55 to 325. I'll have some additional information coming out via school messenger to remind everybody. But again, we're going to a standard two hour delay. When I started here in 2008, we used to have 60 minutes, 90 minutes, and two hours. 
Uh, we had standardized to 90 minutes, but we figure at this point in time to give town folks a little bit more time to get our sidewalks and parking lots cleared and town residents to get sidewalks cleared for the safety of our kids. This makes perfect sense. Um, web principal search, want to bring you up to speed on that. The web principal position has currently been posted. That posting is open. It will remain open until December 3rd. We are currently in the process this week of uh, finalizing our hiring committee for this position. The posting closes on December 3rd and on December 4th we will have a staff and parent focus group uh, uh, at 350 for staff and 6 o'clock for parents. I will be attending those focus groups as will central office staff. The first week of December next week we'll also be beginning our paper screen and on December 10th and 11th we'll work on a phone screen of candidates. We expect and anticipate first round of interviews to happen on or around December 18th. And then finalists from round one to get performance tasks between December 20th and January 6th. January 6th, after the vacation, we'll look at central office and superintendent interviews, followed by reference checks. And we're looking at a potential start date of on or around February 19th of 2020. Now there are some who talk about the fact that doing a principal search mid-year is difficult and you don't get the best quality candidates. I want to be clear with the board and with the community as well. We're not doing this to settle. We're looking for the best possible candidate. If we don't get the best possible candidate, we'll go out again. We've done this before with previous hires. We'll do it again. We must get it right. A couple of other items for you. Tomorrow night's football game, the annual Weathersfield Newington football game kicks off at 6 p.m. at Catone Field. It's an hour earlier than normal, so we can get you home for Thanksgiving festivities. The Thanksgiving game typically draws a larger crowd, so please plan accordingly. I'd also like to remind the community that the Weathersfield High School is a smoke-free campus. That means no smoking of cigarettes or any vape products, and board policy prohibits alcohol on campus so if you are going to the parking lots just to let you know the police department will be patrolling parking lots we want everybody to arrive safely and to get home safely um, this game will have playoff implications the eagles have had a great year at seven and two newington also at seven two and two so we're looking for a uh, forward to a big game tomorrow night you. your calendar uh will be absolutely filled with holiday concerts um we we are only three weeks out to the holiday break in December after we get back from Thanksgiving vacation. So your um, community events will be on your calendar. Also, your Friday updates will include schedules of student-based concerts. And I want to make sure everybody's aware of the fact that the Holidays on Main annual event, the tree lighting ceremony, takes place next Thursday uh, down on Main Street from 5 o'clock until 9. The Career Advisory Board met last evening at Weathersfield High School. Um, this group has been doing some dynamic work. We've got a lot going on between our developing partnership with Goodwin College. We sent 12 students to the Aerospace Conference last week with Ben Sikora and Sue Coco. Uh, we had a lunch and learn yesterday with CCSU Associate Athletic Director Amy Strickland, a 1992 Weathersfield High School graduate. We had four students attend the annual Traveler's Actuarial Job Shadow uh, on November 8th. And then upcoming events through the Career Advisory Board, we have on December 12th, mock interviews uh, for Ms. Riccardi's career prep classes. December 13th, we have an engineering panel in the auditorium. We have a fundraiser coming up to Puerto Vallarta uh, coming up on January 13th, 2020. This will raise funds for field trips for our students to get out into the community which directly aligns with our um, strategic plan. And also want to put the word out there that our second annual career <coughs> fair is coming up on April 24th, 2020. We've actually had to move into the small gym because we ran out of space in the cafeteria last year. And at this time, I would also like to announce that the Weathersfield Public Schools, along with WEC, will be the recipient of a grant. Um, we were awarded, uh, just got this news this afternoon, the Parent Trust Fund Grant from the Connecticut State Department of Education Office of Student Supports and Organizational Effectiveness in the amount of $7,780 to cover the cost of our 2020 PEP group through UConn. 
Um, so this will be our fourth PEP group. I see some PEP graduates out in the uh, audience this evening. This has been a tremendous, tremendous capacity builder and we're absolutely thrilled uh, that we were able to secure these funds. And I would be remiss if I did not thank Kim Bobbin, who has been instrumental in turning over every possible stone to make sure that she's accessing grants and alternative sources of income and revenue so that we can do these important programs in Weathersfield. And again, when you look at our strategic plan and you look at goal three, this is exactly where this ties in. So very much looking forward to working with another PEP group um, later on this spring. A few items from the uh, sports world. Uh, as you know, if you don't see Mr. Santos here this evening, uh, he is involved in a football event this evening. So he sends his regrets, but uh, wanted me to report on the fact that our fall sports are uh, wrapping up. We had some outstanding uh, results uh, this fall with our teams. Very, very proud of our, our teams. Um, Colleen Boudet was named the uh, coach, field hockey coach of the year, uh, and will be honored at a upcoming dinner. We also learned today that our girls soccer team ended up winning the sportsmanship award um, through the Girls Soccer Association through CAAC, and our girls volleyball team also won a sportsmanship award um, through the uh, Connecticut Volleyball Association. So uh, congratulations to our teams, a job well done. And uh, with that, I wish all of our uh, staff, I wish all of our families and our students uh, a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Mr. Emmett. Thank you. All right, moving on to action items. Do I have a motion to approve the cancellation of the regular, regular Board of Education meeting for December 24th, 2019? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Yes, uh, this meeting falls on uh, Christmas Eve and uh, policy doesn't allow us to do meetings over school vacations. Um, in addition, what we are looking to do is to have the uh, schedule of the 2020-2021 board meetings before you at the first December meeting uh, next month. So, um, All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Motion passes. Second rec recommended motion, approval of the international field trip request to Greece. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. A second? Second. Any discussion? Which uh, individuals? Mr. Nicholas, is this yours? Actually, we're gonna start off with you first. Well, please come forward. Sure. We have uh, Drew Nicholas and Shannon Blanger teacher leaders from Wethersfield High School. I think we have a PowerPoint set up. I'm not sure how to start it, but <laughs> we kept it short, so we decided to combine <clears throat> our presentation for both trips, but they are separate trips. <clears throat> All right, and then for those of you that might not know us, my name is Shannon Belanger. I teach math at the high school. This is my ninth year. Um, and last year, I last summer, I chaperoned the Australia and New Zealand trip. I'm Drew Nicholas. I'm not going to tell you how long I've been teaching here. <laughs> it's a long time. Um, last year, I took students to France and Spain. Uh, I'm taking kids to Ireland in April. And uh, with your approval, maybe Greece very <laughs> soon. <laughs> All right, and then I'm seeking approval for um, going to Germany and Switzerland. All right, so this, is, this slide is just going to cover our itinerary. Uh, hopefully you've got some of the brochures that I sent down. It's pretty much identical to what you see in the brochure. Um, one of the nice features of this trip is that it includes both the mainland of Greece and uh, there's a three-day cruise attached um, to finish up the cruise. Uh, I did the same itinerary about 10 years ago, and it was an amazing trip. Uh, it really does hit on almost every aspect of any class that we teach, whether it's you know, history or you know, literature with the mythology, the legends, art. Uh, food, uh, if you name it, I can connect it to <laughs> our curriculum. Uh, it's a really amazing trip, and the kids had an amazing time the last time we went. Oh, here's some of the highlights. So we'll be in Athens, Mycenae, uh, Cape Sunion, which is uh, just down the coast from Athens, <coughs> and Delphi, where the Oracle will once again predict the Patriots will win the Super Bowl this year. <laughs> It's not much of an oracle. Uh, this is a <laughs> 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 Maybe. 
this is just another list of highlights on the trip. Um, <clears throat> I packed everything we can possibly do into the trip. Uh, we're going to do a Greek evening with a dinner and dancing, music, Greek music. Uh, there is a pottery class, apparently. There is um, a day trip uh, out to Three Islands right off the coast of, of uh, Athens. That's in addition to the, the cruise at the end. Um, it, it's just an amazing itinerary. The kids are really going to be busy all the time. Um, learning, learning, learning. <laughs> All right, so my trip is to Germany and Switzerland, and um, as Drew said, right, these trips echo a lot of the same um, things that we believe as teachers, right, as the school district believes in the strategic plan, right, um, globalized learning, right, the ability to, to talk about culture and history. For my trip, the focus is STEM, so science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, and this trip is focused on sustainable living. So obviously climate change has been a big um, debate of discussion that we've had in some of our classes. So how um, do we teach kids about sustainable living? Um, Germany and Switzerland are some of the world leaders in this area and ecotourism, um, renewable energy, and urban farming. So it's just a couple of the things that we're gonna be focusing on. Um, the STEM focus for this trip offers experiential learning. Um, so kids will have a project-based learning opportunity um, they'll be in the in an urban farm setting learning about urban planning and agriculture and how um, we can sustain our population. Um, we are going to go to some innovative locations. So we're going to talk to some scientists, um, industry leaders, um, as well as some engineers and some researchers um, as part of our trip. So it's really a more global experience um, instead of just a traditional science or math classroom. And so for my trip, we're going to see Berlin. Um, we're gonna go to the um, topography of Terror Museum, which is has part of the Berlin Wall. Um, it's where the um, SS like office was. It's a, one of the few remaining structures that wasn't bombed during the war. So there is that history component, um, as well as we're going to Freiburg. So Freiburg, we're gonna do an urban quest and go to an innovation academy. Um, so kind of learn about innovation and what other um, cultures are doing to help with the sustainable living aspect. The Black Forest, that connects the literature um, with the, uh, what is it, the grim fairy tales, oh, yeah. right? And then um, Lucerne, I'm really excited about Lucerne, going to the Swiss Alps. Um, there's the UNESCO biosphere there, so it's essentially like a national park, they just call it something different. Um, and then also going to explore a glacier. Um, and these are just some of the highlights. I'm really excited for day nine um, with that Swiss Alps. And then we're gonna go into a nuclear bunker and see how, um, you know, that history connection with the war, but also like how the sustainable um, aspect of it, they had a hospital there and, you know, it was pretty much like an underground city. So that exploration, um, and then, you know, a little bit of culture, we're gonna learn how to make some flatbread. Um, and then also some history, it's just a nice little blend. Okay, so um, this sort of, sort of is uh, surveys that were taken by, by EF Tours. That's the company we're both using, Educational mm -hmm. First Tours. Uh, and it just kind of okay. shows you some of the effects that travel, travel has on students. <clears throat> I was reading through one of their brochures, and there's so many different ways that getting outside of your little bubble in Wethersfield or Connecticut mm -hmm. changes the way kids look at the world, the way they think, uh, their confidence level especially. Uh, so these, I mean, I'm not going to go read through it because you can see it there, but um, it's amazing what um, the diversity effect is as well. Mm -hmm. The respect for other people, other cultures that develops when students do just kind of get away from what they're used to and, and become immersed in another culture. It, uh, it's, really, it's really effective too for students who are planning to go on to college and or even employment. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and employers and colleges appreciate students who are world travelers as well. Mm -hmm. Right, it gives them some perspective. So I know um, when I was a student in high school, I had the opportunity to go on three of the EF trips. Um, I did go to Greece. And um, it really, like I know for me, it really helped me open up my ability to be an independent you know, leader. I went as a freshman. I was this little scared girl going on the plane and I came home really excited and confident. Um, so our students I know have, come back to us and they have not only the stories and the memories that they can talk about, but you know some of the things that they've learned, some of those soft skills, right? How to go through customs, how to deal with money, how to you know manage, oh, my credit card, but I don't know if I have it, what did I do, where's my passport? So managing those life things really is a life lesson. 
So um, EF Tours is a really um, safe, right? They have a lot of opportunities, a lot of safety um, components involved. There is a six to one ratio which, between chaperones and students. Um, they have 24 hour service. If there's an emergency, um, the tour director knows what to do. Um, you know, aside from us being like CPR and first aid trained, like mm -hmm. there's, there's another hand, they speak the language. Um, and also if we had an emergency or missed a flight or something like that, we can call 24 hour, hours, they'll answer the phone. Um, so there's really a lot of, a lot of safety. They, you know, they have built this, this company on safety. Right? It's always our priority as well. So. Yeah. Uh, and they're at both ends. So obviously they're, they're have head, their headquarters, the closest to us is in Cambridge, Mass. Uh, but they do have offices, 53 offices in Europe too. So they're everywhere. Yeah, and their world headquarters is in Switzerland. So it's their backyard. <laughs> All right, there's a lot included. Keep hitting that button. I know, there's <laughs> so many things. For the most part, you're, uh, there's two meals a day. Uh, lunch is not included only because we're on the move. We're going somewhere. And a lot of times we'll be in a town square and we'll give the kids free time to meet. And we only do this in safe places. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll say like, come back here in 90 minutes. If they don't feel comfortable with that, kids can stay with us. Um, they're, we're happy to have them stay with us. Uh, it is, you build rapport with the kids too. You know, they see you differently as, as they do when they're, you're at school. Um, but it's a great opportunity for them to kind of do that budgeting, go out there and find their lunch um, and sort of really be on their own in a safe way for a little bit and then they so so that's why lunch isn't on there uh, but just about everything else is included transportation transfers to the airport uh, all the all the ground or you know, bus or train transportation it's all included all right and then um, lastly EF tours offers some educational resources so um, we could offer kids through an independent study the opportunity to get high school credit. I know this is how I sold it when I was a ninth grader to my parents. Um, now they are fully accredited um, with Southern New Hampshire University. So kids can earn um, three credits for, it's $215. Um, and if they, that's an option for them, they can sign up through that online. Um, then also it gives kids a very much a global perspective and something that they can use to talk about in their college essay um, when they are applying to college. And they even have a, a little kit for writing college essays for mm -hmm. the kids that they can use. It sort of goes hand in hand with uh, the travel, the idea of travel and what that experience did for you and how it changed you so they can help you with your college admissions essays. So. Do you have any questions for us? Yes. yes I just wondered how many do you think are going with you? Do you have an idea? I have enough space for 40. I don't, I okay. don't think I'll get yeah. that many. Okay. A few years back, I had 45 kids. Okay. Don't ever want to do that again. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I have 12, to give you an example, I have 12 going to Ireland with me. Okay. Um, yeah, and that's no, a nice number. I'm just curious number. what the numbers could, of the safety. Yeah. And On average, I, my trips that I've taken, sort of the, that 45 was an outlier. Okay. Um, and 12 is sort of the smallest. Yes. They're usually in the 20s. Good. Yeah, the Australian New Zealand trip had 29. Excellent idea. I mean, I mean, I'm, I appreciate that you guys are willing to do it mm -hmm. because it isn't something that, you know, you can stay nice and cozy in your classroom. But this is an extension that really calls for a lot of skill to handle the kids and, and know the variety of kids that you're bringing with you from the quiet little girl who's going to follow when you like was holding your hand and then the rambunctious <laughs> other ones that are going to say, well, can we go? You know, so <laughs> you, you've taken on a challenge and I'm pleased that you're willing to do it. Well, thank you. What's the cost? I'm just curious. Okay, so my trip is $3,900. Um, it ends up being roughly, there's a $200 tuition discount right now through the end of December. Obviously, it's pending board approval. Um, and then it ends up being roughly like $100 every two weeks. So for a couple hours of babysitting, a kid could afford to go because it's so far away. This is for the summer of 2021. Yeah, sure. mine's a little pricier. It's a 12-day trip um, with the cruise. It's 4,200, so it's a little bit more. Um, and I'm not planning it. It's it's 20 months away. Yeah. And I so I came here for approval this early so that more kids from different backgrounds, different financial backgrounds, have that opportunity to go. So. I was just keep curious. the keep right. the monthly payments you, low, yeah. but it's but a little bit more. If you need someone money. to help you on either trip, <laughs> I, I told you somebody. <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other questions, Jason? Yeah, I would really appreciate um, 
if we could have the opportunity to have some interaction with the kids that have gone on trips. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Drew, you said you went on a trip last spring. Yes. I'd love to hear from those kids how it was, what they learned, and what kind of impact the trip had on them. Sure. So that'd be something I'd like to schedule. I know uh, Mr. Sand has done multiple trips down yes. to Central America, and we had a presentation, and it was amazing to see how these kids interacted, how they really enjoyed the trip. I also like the idea of providing them ample time to raise funds. This is not a board-funded mm. trip. Not at um, all, yeah. So, you know, the fact that we can give these folks a lot of time to be able to raise funds um, to realize this dream, I think, is important. So, and again, I echo the sentiment of Elaine. I appreciate the work that you do. <laughs> I know it is a tremendous amount of work and effort and planning, and you take on a huge responsibility, but the payoff for our kids, I think, is huge. So, thanks for presenting. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, John. Yes, thank you, uh, you know, for putting this together. Um, I know a few years back we also had an alert that over overseas and um, is there an insurance policy that the students get to take out if for some reason we're not comfortable with them traveling mm -hmm. yeah there's a couple of different things they can take insurance out but also EF has alternate uh, itineraries that they can change fairly quickly mm -hmm. if there is a problem yeah um, I know the last time I took kids to Greece there was sort of a lot of rumblings going on and I was keeping an eye on the on, on the federal uh, travel advisory <clears throat> and I, that's kind of a habit I get into whenever I'm taking the trips to keep an eye on what's happening there. Things are pretty good over there now. Um, but you remember when the, their economy was bottoming out and a lot of protests. And one of the interesting things was we got to go there and sort of see very peaceful protests. Um, it wasn't, it, you know, it was, a, it was a good time and, you know, the police presence was pretty high. But, uh, you know, even that, it sounds very negative, but the students got to see sort of a different view of the world and how people react with their governments. Yeah, right. But to answer your question, there, there are ways to- Safety get nets. The, there I are safety nets. That's, absolutely. yeah, I know there was last time and so I just wanted to bring it to the table yeah. so that those are people that are listening know that we are aware of that. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Granato. Okay, just um, on the trip to Switzerland and Germany mm -hmm. and it's a STEM setup. Yeah. Um, I thought of, there's a company right nearby, since you have time, I thought perhaps you could connect with them. They are very into robotics and technology. It's Arburg, okay. which is right down, is it Gilbert Avenue in Rocky Hill? And they're on the edge of the Black Forest. That's where their main operation mm -hmm. is. And they're supposed to be a state-of-the-art building for manufacturing of robotics and high tech. So if you're following, as you are, the STEM Set up, it would be a great place to visit yeah, I'll and connect with it. them. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. definitely will look into it. Thank, Thank you. you. Any more questions or comments? Oh, it's open to adults as well if anybody's interested. Okay. <laughs> We're Thank sending you. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> we have to save $4,200, Kelly. Right. <laughs> I'll go to Ireland. Is it too late? No, no. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Right, thank you. So right now we have a motion and a second for the approval of the field trip request to Greece. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Motion passes. Can I have a motion to approve the international field trip request to Germany and Switzerland? So moved. A, a second, thank you. Any discussions? We have the presentation. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining. Motion passes. Thank you. you want to, we're going to put that up now. Thank you. If the remote likes us. Or how do we leave the room? You can come yeah. over. Yeah. Get the mask. You have that mask. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next up, discussion items. The first read of the Shipman and Goodwin policy updates that were in our packet. Mr. Emmett? Yeah, we have a uh, series of policy updates uh, before you for a first read. Uh, these, uh, pending any adjustments or updates, will come before you again for approval. Uh, this, all, all of these policies, we have policy 1500. 
Uh, we have an update on the prohibition against smoking out in the community. Uh, policy 4110, uh, alcohol, tobacco, and drug-free workplace. Uh, an update for policy 4250. This uh, is in relation to child abuse, neglect, and sexual assault reporting. We have an update to policy 4700. This is sex discrimination and harassment in the workplace. Policy 5100, there's an update uh, for attendance, truancy, and chronic absenteeism. Policy 5150, there is an update to the bullying and safe school climate plan. Policy 5700, there is an update with regard to student discipline. And there is a slight update in policy 5850, transportation. So I will certainly uh, welcome any of your comments uh, through the Friday update emails, uh, and we'll make any adjustments necessary. For the policy and planning committee also coming forward, we've got a couple of um, other issues that we need to bring up, including the graduation requirements. So we're going to have to update that as well. Right. Yes, Elaine. Um, I'm still on this policy committee from 2011. and. Um, I would like to say we should approve tonight's first reading, um, but as I read them thoroughly this weekend, there's a couple adjustments that we probably should look in, this com in committee before we finally um, give a second read, and Mr. Emmett and I talked about them, but to inform the whole board, there seems to be a section that um, on the Safe Schools Climate Plans, it in the, le in the policy, it says that any parent who, let's say your child's in Webb or Sil Silas Dean, you um, want to know what your school safe school climate plan is. So you go to the school on the website, and the search box, you're supposed to be able to put in safe school climate plan. And um, it doesn't come up. There's nothing that comes up. So I tried it in all schools because I'm not a computer expert. And Mr. Emmett and I said, and it sounds like it's a mandate from the state that we all have that available to all of you who want to see what your school's safe school climate plan is. So um, I think uh, we'll, in committee with Mr. Lesser, the chair, we'll discuss that at the next committee meeting and then bring it forward for a second read. Um, it's just a little technical error that we, we probably overlooked. Um, but, um, but I just want the whole board to know that I would approve a first reading, but not a second reading until this is uh, corrected for you people to see. Thank you. Mr. Cassio. Yes, um, and I'm glad Elaine brought that to the attention. It's not that it's the read of the actual policy. It's the implementation on our website. Is that correct? No, it says that. It says the... Um, the way it's re read, the way it reads, basically says that you go on to our school. Yes. Okay, so it's just a technical difficulty. Yeah, okay. Right. It's, it's so I tried it, it was, you know, like a parent. Right. And nothing came up. So how would you people wouldn't be able to see right. um, your own school's safe school climate plan, which is made by a committee in your school, led by your president, principal and teachers and a parent, I think it says, has to be on that committee. So it's, it's just something that I think as a parent myself in this world where she, Ms. Brown was talking about, you might want to look at it and say, what's, what's how safe in what's going on in my school that's a safe school climate plan. Um, only, that was the only, the only issue I had for it, um, Mr. Lesser, and um, because we were in transitioning of boards, I, I share, shared it with Mr. Lesser and Mr. Uh, Emmett, and so I think the whole committee and the whole board should know what we're up to. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions or comments? All right, thank you. Next item, announcements and information in your packets, the new committee assignments and the dates of meetings. Also the calendar with all the great winter concerts, try to get out and see them. And don't forget the lighting of the trees next Thursday. M meetings held, Weathersfield Early Childhood Collaborative. Ms. Okay. Bernard, did you make it? Sure, we had um, a meeting on Monday, November 18th um, WEC is Weathersfield Early Childhood Collaborative, and our mission is that all Weathersfield children, birth to eight, are healthy, developmentally successful learners and connected to the community. Um, Meryl Gay, who is the Executive Director of Connecticut Early Childhood Alliance, Alliance was the guest speaker. Meryl spoke of the strategies that the Alliance uses to get early childhood legislation passed in our General Assembly. He's very clever. The Alliance is a dedicated group whose focus is on the well-being of young families and children in Connecticut. 
The Family Learning Program is led by Kim Bobbin. This is part of WEC and is successfully running its preschool program. Lisa Puglisi continues to be the administrator of the WEC website. She stated there is a high number of visitors, a great tool for our young families in town. Um, the collaborative has assembled the fact that we have 44 languages are spoken in the Weathersville Public Schools. Our note said 31, but it's up to 44. That's a 61% increase in English language learners in Weathersville Public Schools in the past five years. Two elementary schools report increases of nearly over 100% during that time period. WEC continues to focus on not just the child, but to be successful in our schools and communities, but to work with the child and the family. And I've always said in order to have a great school system, we must have a solid early childhood program, and WEC is one of the strongest for our youngest citizens. We are researching if one of the strategies that enabled our third grade SBAC scores to skyrocket is the very early intervention done through WEC. And finally, for all of us to be informed, the strategic plan under goal two, civic and family engagement, states in action four, that the system will partner with town organizations to strengthen educational opportunities for students and families, and one of those being WEC. And current funding is running out for WEC by June of 2020, so that is a concern. Thank you, Mrs. Granato. Uh, Correct Council, Ms. Bernard. Yep, I got to travel around a little bit. Correct Council was on Wednesday, November 20th, and the Correct Council is the Capital Region Educational Council, of which Weathersfield is a member, along with 35 other surrounding towns. Similar to our board meetings, there was a staff recognition of Carl Destefanis, who was named Teacher of the Year, and he's a teacher from Soundbridge. Also, a status report on enrollment from the superintendent of CREC, Tim Sullivan. The state does have a target on the number of students enrolled in each school. The target, total target, is 8,332 students, and the total enrollment right now is 8,370. The cost for each student is $10,652. CREC did put the tuition fee for elementary schools at $4,500 and secondary at 5,100. Really, the, my favorite reason for going to CREC is they get a report on legislative updates on the task forces that are meeting on the new, many new policies the state has put into place. Um, this is a great way through CREC to network with our neighboring towns. So thank you on that. Thank you. And tonight we had Finance and Information Management Committee meeting. Mr. Michaels. Thank you. We had our first meeting earlier this evening. Uh, Mr. Kazaka shared with us the updated uh, year to date numbers. We are currently looking at about 200,000 over budget, and that is stemming mostly from special education placements outside of the district. We're seeing um, some potential savings in a few different areas that is offsetting the larger number um, of those out of district placements. We also uh, briefly touched on a Looking at starting to look at a calendar for the upcoming budget cycle, um, and the committee is committed to starting that process earlier. So hopefully, um, early to mid January is when we will get that first budget uh, presented to the board, so that we can move on from there. And we are passing some stuff over to Mr. Lesser and his committee as far as a possible name change to the committee that would more accurately de describe what we're doing. Thank you. Um, no meeting scheduled. There's no unfinished business. Public comment. Again, you can come to the podium, state your name and address, and you have five minutes. Anyone wishing to make public comment, please come up. Hi, Beth Riley, uh, 12 Hubbard Place in Marshfield. Um, two quick things. Uh, I won't take up a lot of time. Um, number one, on the principal search for web, um, I would just implore you to not only have a focus group with teachers, but to have multiple teachers on the uh, interview committee from multiple different disciplines, uh, pupil services, different grade levels, curriculum specialists. Um, I think that faculty has kind of been through the ringer and they deserve a strong voice in who gets hired. 
Um, and then I agree with Mary Kay Jensen. I would like this budget uh, fully funded this year. Um, I will also be attending often. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to make public comment? Seeing none, board comment? Any board members wishing to make comment? Mr. Cassio. Yes, thank you. Um, I would like to congratulate all the sports teams as well for a successful season. Uh, the other thing is um, that came up tonight was regarding security issues. Uh, the Weathershields Public Schools have made this a number one priority. Uh, safety and security is one of our goals. So uh, unfortunately, our goals are not all accomplished because of budgetary issues, but we are on top of it. I know our staff, our security um, is uh, second to none and in touch with the superintendent and their faculty. Um, with regards to future plans in the building uh, for Weathersfield, um, I, along with Bobby Granado, uh, served on that committee, and we're very hopeful that we can continue to serve on that committee. Um, the plans are still moving forward. Uh, we have a 10-year outlook plan, and we are moving rapidly. So we are being transparent. Uh, we're gonna come together as soon as we have some additional information uh, with regards to the elementary uh, growth and the plan in force. So yes. That is going to be continuing going forward. Uh, we've put a lot of time and years into this right now. So unless Bobby has any other comments, I think we're hit the road running on that mm -hmm. committee and we're going to continue with that. Thank you. Any further board comments? Yes, Ms. Evans. Um, I have two. I would like to kind of echo Mr. Cassio. I have two small kids at Hanmer and the safety and security of them and all the students are something I never stop thinking of and my counterparts. Absolutely, so um, I appreciate your advocacy and coming to talk and I know that this comes up with everybody constantly on every committee in some way, shape or form. Um, so I just wanted to make my board comment for that and um, my last comment, well I will stop and say congratulations to all of the sports but I'm super psyched about the field hockey team at WHS, that was huge, so I just wanted to go on record. Um, my last comment, though, is about the budget being fully funded. I appreciate um, the comments that I heard today, and I want to continue to hear them. Um, I would also urge you to go to the town council meetings and share those comments as well, as um, there's a trickle-down effect there um, come springtime. So thank you so much. Uh, spread the word. I appreciate it. And go to the town council meetings too. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Any more comments? Mr. Lesser. Thank you, Chuck. First of all, I want to say this is my first board meeting and I'm so excited to work with this board and I'm so excited to help represent the community. The most important dollars we spend are the dollars to educate our children and many people choose the community they live in by the schools. So it's critical and I appreciate all the comments about the budget both from the public and from the fellow board members. Uh, secondly, I want to say I got the opportunity to go to Emerson Williams uh, PTO. It's probably the most organized meeting I've ever attended in my life. So I congratulate uh, you on, on that. And also I was uh, very excited to scoop ice cream at the Charles Wright fundraiser last week at Scoops and Sprinkles. And I see some of my fellow scoopers that were there. But uh, it's just amazing that what the parents do in this community and I was excited to do that and look forward to doing more events. And lastly, and um, the superintendent talked about the Career Advisory Board, but we have some folks that are doing some super work for our kids and connecting them with career skills, with the soft skills of resume writing, of learning to shake hands, of learning to look people in the eye, and giving high school students the confidence that they need. And I want to thank uh, Bobby, Elaine, the superintendent, and Chris, Healy, who came to our, our meeting last night, and I invite all the board members as well as the public to those meetings. They're generally the last Monday of the month, so the next one we won't be doing in December is Monday, January 27th at 7 o'clock. They usually last an hour, and we would love more input from fellow board members as well as the public. So thank you, Chuck. Thank you.
Anyone else? Yes, Ms. Granado. Um, we're talking about these organizations that are working for our students, and um, on November 26th, which was Thursday, we had the Weathersville Education Foundation met. And this is another group that is working to enhance and enrich our curriculum so that our students will have every opportunity we can afford them. Um, the agenda that we had on the 26th, was, or I'm sorry, it was Thursday the 21st, that we had was to um, include new officers being selected and new board members being voted in. Also, two requests for funds. Now, the Westfield Education Foundation is beyond its infancy now, so now we have some money and we're giving it away. One was for the Career Academy Board, which we're finding out we're so related to each other, um, to fund buses to go to some of these career fairs that these um, students are being invited to. And the other one was to start an e-sports team at the high school and it was because of the need for computers for them. So this is another dynamic group of Wethersfield people who are working to enhance our school curriculum for our students. And I'd like to say at this closing remark opportunity to wish everyone a very happy Thanksgiving and we do have much to be thankful for here in town. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, I'd like to say I was at the Wethersfield uh, at Weathersfield Education Foundation meeting, and if anyone doesn't know what esports is, I learned that my son playing video games all day could turn into a college scholarship, so I didn't <laughs> do that, and into a career, which was crazy for me to think about. So there's going to be esports teams at the high school where they're going to have like 20 kids competing in video games, and it's at Central, and there's students getting full rides all across the country. So I was like, oh, keep playing the video games upstairs. <laughs> Maybe I'll get you a free college. But that was exciting to find out. And also, I was able to see Midsummer Night Dream, and I think that was a couple weeks ago at the high school. It was awesome. I was a little lost, to be honest, but it was staged back in Woodstock era, so it was a different twist than the original, but it was well put together, and the students did a great job. And it was my first time seeing the auditorium in full action, and that was great. And they said in the spring, it's going to be the Adams family, so that's probably much more down on my level, so <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing that. <laughs> Hope to see everyone at tomorrow night's football game, 6 o'clock at home, and a happy Thanksgiving. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Motion passes. <laughs>